Good afternoon, and welcome to the Wednesday afternoon conference call with Trusts Unlimited. This is Jim George speaking. I'm the non-attorney spokesman and facilitator for Trusts Unlimited. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this call, particularly those of you calling in for the first time and those that will be listening to the replay over the next 24 to 48 hours. Probably 95% of the people that do listen to our calls do so on the replay because it does provide a convenient way to listen at a time uh, best suited for each individual. We uh, like to move quickly through these calls, bottom line the information for you. We know you're busy people, you have other things to do. We do have a standard format. We spend a few minutes talking about the reinstitution of the Iraqi dinar as we continue to believe that the dinar is the base currency for the possible revaluation of these other currencies. A few minutes talking about the program we've put in place to assist you, and then we go to a brief Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about the situation uh, in Iraq. First, by way of disclaimer, Trusts Unlimited is not the purveyor of the dinar and these other currencies. We're not advocating either the sale or purchase of these currencies, but as rather substantial currency holders ourselves, we're sharing with you the information that we deem relevant. And obviously the most relevant piece of information is the potential reinstitution of the Iraqi dinar. We have a kind of a funny window for that right now. It seems unlikely that the reinstitution would occur this month, January, as we only have about another week in the month. However, the likelihood of a reinstitution is pretty strong over the next a few months. Uh, it could carry on even into March, and I'll get into a little bit more of an explanation of that here today. Iraq right now is moving rather quickly on two tracks, currency reform, and governmental reform. And this is due in large part to the international pressure that they've finally been placed under. The UN has made it clear that if Iraq does not resolve certain issues, and I'll get into those issues, they're going to fall back into Chapter 7. The IMF has threatened Iraq with the possibility of leaving them in Article 14 interminably, which could affect the revaluation of their currency globally, which is what they're desperately going to need. And the thing that probably frightens them the most is U.S. sanctions. The president has threatened Iraq with severe sanctions. And uh, as the uh, planet now, now knows, Donald Trump is not afraid of tariffs, and Donald Trump is not afraid of sanctions. And he has placed tariffs and strong sanctions on some very strong uh, players in the international community. So those three threats have finally made, in my opinion, the people in charge in Iraq understand that they need to clean up their act and they need to do it quickly. Now, I mentioned currency reforms. What's happening there? Well, despite some of the turmoil on the streets, the CBI, Central Bank of Iraq, is nevertheless proceeding with the project of the deletion of the zeros. One of the reasons that we know that is because in the past, as the regional banks of Iraq have turned in the three-zero provisional currency, they received a credit on paper or computer. However, now the CBI is issuing to these eight regional banks the 50 and $100 notes so that's an indication of the reinstitution because these notes are worthless without the reinstitution of the currency. Now, when you want to talk about the governmental reforms, there's a lot going on there as well. We do have the uh, resignation of Mahdi, but before the resignation, the cabinet of ministers did approve the budget to pass it on to the parliament. As a result, the president of the republic, Salih, has appointed Mohammed Alawi as the interim or caretaker prime minister with a vote on a new prime minister as early as next week. 
And as I mentioned before, the 2020 budget has been passed uh, for, by the cabinet, and it could be up for final vote in the parliament as early as next week. In addition, there was the final passage of the financial management law. Now, this is an important law. It's sort of a uh, kissing cousin to the uh, accessibility, uh, the accountability and justice law. This law basically reigns in government corruption with substantial consequences for uh, individuals that are being unduly influenced by Iran, by individuals that uh, are embezzling funds or are uh, making money through this arbitrage of the uh, auctions. And they also have instituted an investigation into funds that were embezzled from the CDI for the express purpose of funding Iranian militia activities in country and in other countries. So this is getting very serious and in a hurry. Most importantly, though, are the streets of Iran for a couple of reasons. First, the U.S. forces have made it extremely clear to the Iraqi government that pursuant to the uh, Status of Forces Agreement, the United States not only will not be removing their forces from Iraq, but they are increasing the number of troops in Iraq, and those troops will remain until two things happen, until the corruption is cleaned up and the Iranian influence inside of Iraq has been completely and irrevocably expelled. Second, there is scheduled a one million man protest in the streets of Iraq, and this is important. The mantra, official mantra of this protest is, we want a homeland. Now that's very important, because what they're saying is finally, once and for all, you will set tribal and sectarian affiliations to the side, and you will first and foremost fight for the modern nation state of Iraq and all of its citizens, irrespective of tribe, irrespective of sect. So these are all important developments. Again, that does not mean we will see a reinstitution before the end of the month, although that is possible, but it does mean that the reinstitution is uh, eminent. The other issue is this. Both China and the United States have entered in a $60 billion contract with the government of Iraq in order to rebuild their infrastructure, their electric grid, road systems, etc. The fruition of this contract cannot be accomplished until the currency reinstitutes and is a viable currency. So once again, it's for all the marbles now. Iraq is simply going to have to push through and uh, leave their medieval nation-state status aside and become a modern nation-state if they intend on surviving as an individual modern nation-state without the undue influence of Iran and with the ability to contract with other countries everywhere. This is good news. Again, we were hoping that the uh, reinstitution would happen by mid-January. Of course, it did not. One last point. The passage of the budget will be passed if the reinstitution has not occurred at the old 1180 rate. So long as the government does not make substantial expenditures at that rate, it would not be very difficult for them to simply amend the budget to reflect the new rate pursuant to the reinstitution. So that is why even though they didn't get it done in January, or should they not get it done in January, they still have time to accomplish this again by making sure that the government does not make substantial expenditures at the 1180 rate. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not the best news because, again, we're at the end of January and we did not see the reinstitution. But based on the sum total of everything that, that I've discussed here this afternoon, they are absolutely moving as quickly as they can, given the obstacles, to get to a point where the reinstitution of the currency is going to happen. Now, that means that for those of you that have not as yet gotten your affairs in order and, or do not understand what that may require, 
It's imperative that you do certain things prior to the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar and these other currencies for a number of reasons. To that end, Trust Unlimited has put a program in place to assist you. It's a two-phased turnkey program. Phase one is pre-RV. Phase two is post-RV. Pre-RV involves the establishment of a pre-RV package of asset protection trusts with the assignment of your dinar and other currencies on paper to that trust package. Post-RV involves all of the product services and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies. So let's start with phase one, which is, again, the establishment of a pre-RV package of asset protection trusts with the assignment of your currencies on paper to that trust package. Now, I will be explaining why it's important to get your asset protection instruments in place pre-RV, but there are a number of vehicles out there that one can establish. For example, individuals can establish uh, LLCs or sub-S corporations. They do provide some level of asset protection. But the problem is, is they tend to separate business assets from personal assets. There's two problems here. Number one, possession of the currencies is not a business asset. It's a personal asset. The second, a number of court jurisdictions have ruled that if an LLC or a sub-S corporation is owned in the majority by one person or a closely held group, that LLC or sub-S corporation can be pierced for civil litigation. So these instruments, the LLC and the sub-S corporation, are simply not going to be appropriate for our needs. Some individuals have established something called a revocable trust. Now, a revocable trust will exempt your estate from probate, and it can in some cases substantially reduce and eliminate the federal estate tax. However, a revocable trust can provide no privacy or asset protection. So that's going to be inappropriate for our needs. Some individuals have established an irrevocable trust, and an irrevocable trust is the vehicle you need in order to provide asset protection. However, the protection provided by a single irrevocable trust has limitations. If any asset held within that trust is involved in civil litigation, that could necessarily bring in all of your other assets and net worth because they're all owned by that same entity, that single irrevocable trust. The best asset protection and the protection that we advise for our clients is a package of irrevocable trusts. And a package of irrevocable trusts is the only way that you can provide the privacy, the anonymity, and the asset protection you're going to need. And I'm going to explain to you why that's the case. There are a number of reasons why you need to set up such a package, and it needs to be set up pre-RV for the following reasons. First, by establishing our package, you will preserve your privacy and your anonymity. That's because assets held within our package are sealed meaning that the general public will have no knowledge of your net worth or your actual holdings. Second, by establishing our package, you will avoid personal IRS scrutiny. If you are holding these currencies in direct title when they revalue, the IRS computers will probably spit out an audit. And with the potential magnitude of this revaluation relative to your prior year's earnings, you're probably looking at a full-blown six-year audit. Such an audit would be time-consuming. It would certainly be frustrating because it's going to come along at the precise time when you've had this revaluation, and there are many other things that you'd much rather be doing with your time. But third, the cost of a six-year audit would exceed the cost of our trust package. On the other hand, if your trust is in place and you have assigned your currencies to our trust package, you will have successfully transferred the taxable event from yourself personally to the trust. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons. First, there's less than a 10% chance of an IRS audit if this revaluation were to occur within a rather sophisticated trust package. 
But second and most importantly, even if the IRS determines to audit your trust, they can't do a six-year audit. Why? Because the only taxable event within the trust will be the revaluation itself. The third reason you'd want to establish this trust package is if you're gifting currencies to family and friends in certain situations. Now, philanthropic gifting can always be done on a tax-preferred basis, either pre- or post-RV. But in order to avoid a substantial 40% federal gift tax, you're going to need to give currencies to family and friends prior to the revaluation. Now, if you're gifting to individuals that you have no problem giving them the currency to exchange for themselves or giving them the U.S. dollar lump sum after you have negotiated the exchange, that can be accomplished outside of a trust with a standard gift letter. But if you are hesitant for any reason to give these individuals the post-RV lump sum, you can gift to them through a special gift subtrust that's been established as part of our package. By gifting through this subtrust, their U.S. dollars will be protected along with yours. The language of this gift subtrust allows you to gift up to a certain amount of a currency or currencies, meaning that you can gift to these individuals the exact U.S. dollar amount that you had in mind, irrespective of the exchange rate. But because you are gifting through this gift subtrust, you will be able to manage, invest, and distribute the money to these individuals as you deem appropriate. That's a very important control mechanism. Again, if you are hesitant for any reason to give certain individuals a large lump sum. The fourth reason you'd want to establish this trust package is because it's been structured in such a way as to allow your estate to bypass the cost and delay of probate and the federal estate tax. I'll give you two quick scenarios. Scenario number one, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs in a state of $25 million. Now that estate must go through probate, a process that ordinarily can take anywhere from 6 to 18 months. But probate is a public disclosure process, meaning that the general public will be aware of the size of your estate, who your heirs are, and how much they each stand to inherit. So if anyone feels they have a legitimate claim against you, your estate, or your heirs, they can simply file that claim with a probate court. And that could tie the estate up for years, and in some cases, even decades. And your heirs will have either limited access or no access at all to their respective inheritance until the probate process is completed. Then there's something called the federal estate tax. This is the tax that the federal government would assess in order for that estate to be transferred to heirs. Under current law, approximately $10 million of that $25 million estate would bypass any federal estate tax, but the balance could be taxed as much as 55%. Now, not only is this scenario unacceptable, it is also completely and totally avoidable. Scenario number two, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, you assign those currencies on paper to our asset protection trust package. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away, leaving your heirs that very same estate of $25 million dollars but this time protected in our Asset Protection Trust package. As a result, there will be no probate. There will be no public disclosure of your estate. Your heirs will have immediate access to their respective inheritance, and the federal estate tax will be zero, saving your heirs as much as 55% of their inheritance. The fifth reason you'd want to establish this trust package is for some very specific asset protection benefits. One pre-RV, one post-RV. Pre-RV, this trust package will allow you to circumvent something called 
the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act. What does that mean? Under our system of civil procedure, you can only be sued for what you own in direct title or the value of property at the time you transfer it out of title to an entity like our trust package. So let's take the previous example. You purchase five million dinar for $5,000, you transfer them to our trust. They subsequently revalue for $25 million. You begin to live a lifestyle more reflective of your newfound wealth and a couple of years down the road, someone sees that you're living rather comfortably and decides for whatever reason that they're going to sue you. Well, this prospective plaintiff has a couple of problems. First, he or she better have a very strong case and very deep pockets because this trust is structured in such a way as to make it extremely expensive and extremely time-consuming to pursue civil litigation. But second and most importantly, once any prospective plaintiff learns that pursuant to the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act, the only thing they could ever win by way of a civil award would be $5,000, the value of the currencies at the time you transferred them out of title to the trust, and none of the post-RV value of $25 million, there will be no lawsuit. Post-RV, there's a benefit I like to refer to as limited liability stop loss. This protects you from future bad acts after you have acquired this wealth. This protection is accomplished through a legal strategy called segregation of assets, and this is how it would work. Again, we'll use the same example. You purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000, transfer the currencies to the trust. They subsequently revalue for $25 million, and now that you have $25 million in trust, you decide to make some purchases. So you purchase a larger primary residence, a vacation home, perhaps a half a dozen rental properties for tax write-off and additional cash flow, a couple of cars, a boat, uh, and let's say an RV. But as you purchase these items, you place each of them in their own separate subtrust, which constitutes our package, all of which are to be managed by your master trust. Now, why is this critical from an asset protection standpoint? Well, let's say one day you're driving one of your new cars. You have an accident. The accident is clearly your fault. And tragically, someone is seriously injured or even killed. Well, the family of the victim is going to want to sue you. But remember, civil suits are about monetary awards, and you don't legally own anything. So the plaintiffs would be left to sue the owner of the car that you were driving. Well, who owns that car? One of your subtrusts, of which you are merely the beneficiary. And what's in that subtrust? Merely that one car and the car insurance policy. In that scenario, the car insurance carrier will negotiate an out-of-court settlement with the victim's family. You will not be involved in those rather unpleasant negotiations. The car insurance carrier will repair or replace your car, making you whole. And this is important. All of your other assets are safely protected in the other sub-trusts. Why? Because under the law, those separate sub-trusts are separate legal entities or persons, and the plaintiff would have no standing to pursue a separate legal entity, meaning that this trust package works very much the way a barge would work, where all of the valuable cargo is stored in a series of small compartments. Why? In the event that any compartment is ever breached, the only potential loss would be the cargo in that one compartment. The cargo in the other compartments is safe and secure due to the firewalls, and the barge will never sink. Now, these benefits are lost to you if you do not establish your package of trusts prior to the revaluation of these currencies. Now, there is one other benefit, and it's this. If you are, in fact, a holder of one of our pre-RV asset protection trust packages, 
then you will be eligible to participate in all the product services and professional referrals that will be made available to you and that will be necessary after the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies. I'll just make mention of one here today. Trusts Unlimited will be sponsoring a post-RV seminar to be held in Disney World, Florida, approximately 30 days after the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar. Present at that seminar will, of course, be the staff of Trusts Unlimited to assist you with the management and funding of your trusts post-RV. Many of our clients have already expressed desires to establish scholarship funds, foundational trusts, special needs trusts, charitable remainder trusts, and even the more complicated 501c3 nonprofit and offshore trusts. And the proper way to fund those entities is with the direct transfer of funds from your asset protection trust to those newly formed entities. We'll have our tax specialists there to help you with some of the more sophisticated tax strategies that you're going to need now that you've acquired this wealth. We'll also have our independent fee-based wealth managers there as well. You're going to want to reposition assets after the revaluation for a number of reasons. First, we know statistically that 95% of all windfalls, however large and from whatever source, are lost within three to five years due to inexperience, mismanagement, and fraud. We also know that under the new G20 bank bail-in provisions, the failure of banks in the future will no longer be made whole through the general taxing authority of the respective governments, but first and foremost by the confiscation of funds at the accounts at those banks. So you're going to want to get a substantial amount of your money out at banks and in other markets. Lastly, the general global shift from fiat-based to Basel III compliant commodity-backed currencies in and of itself is going to create extremely volatile financial markets, and you're going to want a substantial amount of your net worth invested in tangible assets. So for all of these reasons, you're going to need to establish your trust prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies. Now, our trust package is initially a package of 10 trusts, consisting of one master trust that will hold your assigned currencies pre-RV, your financial assets like bank accounts and investment accounts post-RV, and manage your additional sub-trusts. One optional gift sub-trust, should you wish to gift currencies to family and friends, which sub-trust can be converted anytime to a standard sub-trust to hold a financial asset like a home, a car, a boat, or something of that nature. Now, this was a rather sophisticated trust package that we've utilized in the past for our more affluent clients, a package that had an initial cost of anywhere from six to $10,000. But when we decided to work with Denarian some years back, we knew that that price tag was going to be unaffordable for many. So by basically back-end loading the funding of this trust and simplifying the package, we've been able to reduce the cost to $3,000. Now, there are several ways you can pay for that. If you, if you pay us up front, we'll discount the price to $2,500, saving you an additional $500. That's simply not possible. We even have a deferred payment arrangement. You'd make an initial payment of $525, which some would basically offset our out-of-pocket costs just to produce and deliver your trust. The balance of the $3,000 would then be paid in $100 monthly installments. We will charge no interest. The only proviso is once the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar occurs, any unpaid balance would need to be paid within 30 days. Now, with this approach, anyone that has currencies and understands the need for getting their trust enforced pre-RV should be in a position to afford to do so. One other suggestion, we do accept credit cards. Pay us up front with a credit card. Not only will you get the $500 discount, but the minimum payment on your card would be substantially less than the 100 a month you would pay under our deferred payment arrangement. But we will work with you in whatever method works best for you. Our objective is to help you get your trust in place and your affairs in order prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies for all of the reasons that we've discussed here. Now, we will be going to a Q&A in just a moment, but before we do, and again for our newer callers, 
I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Trusts Unlimited and why you may want to seriously consider contacting us and getting our initial no obligation package. Our trust package was authored by our attorney, Robert Bly. He's been a practicing attorney for over 40 years, specializing in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning. I myself hold degrees in political science, macroeconomics, and finance. I've worked in these areas for over 38 years, and I, along with my clients, were participating in the reinstitution of the Kuwaiti dinar in the early 90s. So between the two of us, Robert Bly and I have over 78 years experience working precisely in these areas, and I frankly know of no firm that can make that claim. Now, Bob and I have actually been working together for over a decade in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning, and it has been disheartening from time to time to see people walk away from sound estate planning and trust creation because of the mistaken belief that by doing so, they have somehow lost control of their assets and their affairs. In point of fact, it's just the reverse. Under our system of civil procedure, it's when you hold assets in direct title that you can lose control of them. And it's invariably at those times in life that you need and want control that you've lost it. If you've lived for any length of time, you've either experienced in your own life or through friends and family things like unexpected divorce, permanent incapacitation, the onset of dementia, premature death and prolonged and complicated probate processes, then there are investment losses, business losses, and even bankruptcies. The number two loss of wealth now in the aggregate is identity theft. But the number one loss of personal wealth remains confiscation through civil litigation. Anything you own in direct title can be taken from you. So in point of fact, the only way you can manage, protect, and control everything at all times and in all circumstances is through the establishment of a package of irrevocable trusts, and particularly if you have an asset like these currencies, that you're anticipating a substantial increase in value. And we at Trust Unlimited will do everything we can to help you accomplish your personal and financial objectives, both pre- and post-RV, as we understand them. So again, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this call. We are going to go ahead and move to the Q&A in just a moment. Uh, I will be giving you our contact information, so I suggest if you're interested in the things we've discussed, you have a pen and paper handy. We'll be happy to send you our no-obligation package. It has a lot of information about us, about trusts, about the currencies and the revaluation. The package includes everything you need should you wish to proceed with establishing a trust, but again, you're under no obligation by simply receiving the package. You can review the package, contact us if you have any questions, either by phone or email. We'll be happy to assist you, and there will be no consultation fee. I'm going to open the Q&A now. Two quick rules on the Q&A. We take no service calls. Existing clients can contact us by phone or email if they have a question. And second, for obvious reasons, in order to participate in the Q&A, your name and number must be on the screen. So we're going to open up now. While I'm waiting for any potential questions, I'd like to give our newer callers our contact information. You can go to our website, which is trusts with an S, unlimited, LLC.com. Our email address is trusts with an S, unlimited LLC at gmail.com. Our phone service is 307-274-4122. If you'd like to listen to a recent conference call playback, or if you'd be kind enough to refer us to someone that might be interested in our services, you can either go to YouTube and then go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can go to IQD Calls, and go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can simply dial the same number that you dialed for this live call this afternoon with the exception of the last digit. Rather than dialing a four, you'll dial a three, 
and then use the same access code, which is 739-394-POUND. If you'd like to be included on our email list, you can go to our website, go to the bottom, enter your name and email address where indicated. You should be on our email list within 24 hours. Bear in mind that we only send emails out very periodically, pre-RV, but after the reinstitution of the Dinar emails could go out as often as weekly. So let's go to the Q&A. First caller here is area code 347. Yes, yeah. 347, go ahead. Yeah, this is good for me. I have a question. You said that Alawi is going to be the new caretaker prime minister. Um, yes. I, I was hearing I that he was supported by the Iranian faction, and that there was another person that was supported by the protesters. So would that, if things got supported by the Iranian faction, if, if Alawi okay. gets in, would that... Would right. that I think for some reason, I'm having a hard time hearing you, but if I understand your question, you're concerned that Alawi is backed by some Iranians, correct? Yeah. Is that the way yeah. we are here? That it is true. That Allah, that is true, and Alawi does have a checkered past, but remember, he is only taking the interim position. What they did was they wanted to make sure that they could choose someone that the Iranian corrupt officials in Iraq would not object to. So Alawi, again, he's only there temporarily. They want uh, to, to maintain the caretaker uh, government. Uh, I'm quite sure that Alawi will not be the prime minister. Uh, even a body who is a Shia probably uh, would not be considered as the new prime minister. But unfortunately, things are very complicated in Iraq, and so they have to pick individuals that, they, that the majority may not agree with, but they have to make sure that the minority does not continue to drag the feet of the government by running to the court complaining. So they kind of took the bat out of the hand of the officials that are in the minority but are influenced by Iran. Okay, but, no, but so, they, so if they choose the uh, the candidate that the, the protesters are doing, with, that's gonna would that cause more of an uproar then? Uh, I, I don't think so. And um, one of the reasons, as I, as I kind of alluded to in what I was saying earlier when we were talking about Iraq, Iraq is under extreme pressure. Even the people that don't want the country to proceed and, con and want continued Iranian influence understand that if the country falls back into Chapter 7, remains in Article 14, and then suffers sanctions from the United States, uh, it's not going to go well for them either. So everyone's been put on notice. It's time to uh, behave, work together, uh, reinstitute their currency, and have a government that's free to, from corruption and undue Iranian influence. All right, thank you. Yes, yes, sir. It was a good question, and, of course, Iraq is always a complicated mix, and there's always uh, a subplot going on. Uh, that was an astute question about Alawi. It was, frankly, it was my first thought as well. But when you look over the landscape of the situation, they had to appoint someone that was not, there was going to be no complaint. So while the majority may not like Alawi and they may have to hold their nose, they also know that the Iranian corrupt influence uh, is not going to be a factor because Alawi, from their standpoint, is a reasonable choice. Um, that's uh, our last call for this afternoon. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to the call. Bottom line is, is things are moving in the right direction for us. And uh, with a little bit of luck, we could be seeing a reinstitution in the not-too-distant future. Our next call is scheduled for next Wednesday. Certainly, if something of a dramatic nature were to happen, we'll schedule, we will get out an emergency email and try to schedule an emergency call. Again, for those listening for the first time, if the things you heard are of interest, I strongly suggest you contact us to get our initial no-obligation package. Again, it includes everything you need should you wish to proceed. You can contact us if you have any questions, uh, and you're under no obligation if you decide to move on. Our next call, as I said, will be next Wednesday. Um, should something of an emergency or something of a dramatic nature happens, we will try to schedule an emergency conference call. Failing that, however, we will be back next Wednesday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. So have a great week, everyone, and thanks for listening. Bye-bye.